<laughs> so, Kara, aren't, are you, you you are with the, with the main S17 Facebook page and anything? Are you a, like a, a, seems like a point person? <laughs> for, <laughs> for, <laughs> um, well, I've been looking forward to this since like the six month anniversary, or maybe even last year. But um, I don't mind sort of being a port point person. I can't speak for all of the different occupations, but I'm willing to get in touch, and I've been trying to get in touch with um, Maine, and sometimes it's hard because not everybody's on Facebook. So anybody here, like I said, wants to get in touch with me, but I don't want to be point person without consensus. Right. Do you want to... You know, you know what you I'm talking about, though, you know, as we get closer to the date... You, you just just logistics, you know, like what the bus is. Hello, Kara. Where's the, you know? I want to go. I heard about it. Where's the bus gonna? Where's That's the me. bus yeah. gonna be That's leaving me. from Portland? You know, and these good questions. You know, I'm wrong here. Larry's gonna send out an email to different groups to have them suggest <clears throat> getting together um, and pulling off a little initial Ooh. meeting, be it a potluck or whatever. Mm, I remember that decide. from the camp. I, I guess that's what he's saying. Is that the wrong camp? Did you say that? Yeah. Um, I'll yeah, and, and I'll also send email. I'll send the copy of uh, those with um one. I just think this is an important day to like uh to commemorate in in American history, <coughs> frankly, and and one that should continue to like be uh an important date in our history. Um, and I think that will take a lot of concerted effort and organizing for it not to just kind of be. Um, like, you know, one of those, like, things you look up on the computer for, like, any date of the year, and there's 40 things that happened on that date, um, but actually something that, that's meaningful. And also, I guess the, the thing that I've been thinking the most about, you know, when I've been here just kind of traveling, uh, in, like, just in, in beautiful Maine, is this, like, new connection that I think we're seeing with rural folks willing to go down to the city, um, for a day or two a year to, like, um, to join forces, um, with a lot of urban struggles. And I think that is really interesting and important, and I'm, I, you know, I, I was talking to Larry, and I'm not sh it, it's something new I think we're seeing, especially with environmentalists organizing, like, really, um, seeing the importance of taking on, like, big banks, um, and again, just people who've done a lot of rural, amazing rural organizing, suddenly, uh, having an avenue and, um, a system, like, a, an, of, of organizing that, uh, that brings them to, to an urban fight. And, like, you know, the, this, 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 this model of, of national assemblies is, like, totally built into Amer our American history, um, for so long, as we know so well in Maine, and it's also built into, like, the history of, you know, a lot of new, very radical movements in, in, in Europe as well. So I think the, like, the structure is amazing and good, and we should be proud of ourselves and celebrate it on this day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Having said that, the next oh, agenda item was... Actually, uh, oh, sorry. Sorry to do this. No, it's fine. Uh, and if people can organize themselves and, <coughs> you know, into... And those are usually defined as five to fifteen people, and I include support. Um, so, if there are people that want to do that, I think that would be great. And you probably could do it on the bus, or do it by geography, or do it any way you want. But I, and I'm going to ask is, Larry just to just to give a, a little, if you don't mind, a little small definition of an affinity group and how it works, having both in, in many of them. Uh, Affinity groups would be five to fifteen people generally, or something in that range, uh, that are uh, have made a commitment to work together in a particular action uh, with a defined set of roles. Certain people taking certain roles, such as talking to the media, such as doing support, such as uh, focusing on medical care or arrest issues, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and staying together as a group throughout the action. So, uh, and then the other point is that if Sam or anybody else uh, is not planning to go to New York City, what about doing things in Maine in support of that, hoping to uh, 
do that in a way that doesn't take away from the people going down, or maybe even just focusing on supporting those who are going down. But in any case, doing things in Maine in addition to that. The, the Tuesday National Call has got a whole section of it devoted to solidarity actions for people who can't um, make it to New York. Uh, and I think that's a really good... If you're if groups if, if a large if a larger group starts forming that isn't going to come to New York, try to make sure they make it on that Tuesday call because there's some really cool ideas about coordinated national actions. Could you give that number to Larry so Larry could put that out on that email? Absolutely. Thank you. Is there a question? Yeah. Um, are there a lot more of these posters? Because me and Kevin had at least a couple. Then, who um, I can't remember. Oh, actually, no. Huh? Global Action. Action yeah, and he's uh, he's done it every year. I've never done it. They have a, a Blue Angels air show, and it's loud and it's military might. And as if anybody's seen Regis's interview of him, um, it's used kind of. There's two new programs coming out. One of them's on NBC. One of them's called Strike Back, and the other one's called. Uh, Stars for Stripes or something like that. And they're two very militaristic promo TV shows, like reality shows that are coming out. And like Bruce said on that interview, um, this air show is kind of like um, a big draw for young people. And I don't, and he said, you know, it was for him when he was young. And it, the whole, a lot of what uh, Wall Street is about ties into the military industrial complex. Our biggest export in this country is weapons. Um, and I hate to go to these demonstrations because part of me is like, dang, look at those jets, man, they are hot, you know, and, and I, the, the patriotic side of me kicks in, but I'm going to go this year because I think this is do or die time for the whole country, for the planet, and that's why I'll Occupy is kicking off, um, rambling. But anyway, I'm not sure what time it is, but it's on the 25th of August, and I'll Nine try... Nine o'clock in the morning we start. Okay, well, you say it. You do it. Oh. Okay, no more in May. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, the, um, there is a, a Facebook page also for that, and I think you could probably find it if you just did a search. But um, there'll be a walk. Uh, where are they, Where's the gathering? By Bowdoin College first, and to walk to the, um, to the gate. But if you're not up to walking or if you're handicapped or whatever, you can just meet at the gate. Um, at 10. Can you post that on the Occupy walls? I will. Especially Brunswick, because they're right there. Augusta, maybe. Because a lot of the Occupies... Um, I'm here with Occupy Main TV, and Brian Leonard, the executive producer or creator of the show, is not here today, unfortunately, but he wanted to talk about the independence of media in our culture, and I just really, I love what he's doing because he's documenting what we're doing and so that kids can see this down the road in case this history does need to be repeated somewhere down the road. Um, and I just, I, I wanted, he wanted to come to, to bring a statement or something, but he couldn't make it today. But he's in the process of working on a statement, and he'd like to put this out. But we'd also like to put the call out because we want to get more people that are involved with, that would like to become involved with citizen journalism throughout the state. It's not just Portland that this Occupy Maine TV is, is wanting to cover. We want to cover the rest of the state, and we want to be able to get people involved with this. So... Um, if anybody wants to, to talk to me afterwards, feel free. And I also and I also know that somebody else, William Hessian, was wanting to talk about foreclosures and occupied homes. And I know that there are meetings coming up on that. Um, and I could I post that to the the S seventeen the S seventeen. Like Roger Light will put out the occupied email. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. <coughs> I have an announcement that we're doing a direct action training 
um, the weekend after the Common Ground Fair, I don't know the exact dates, um, around the East West Corridor. And we'd like anybody, it's not necessarily going to be specific to this, the East West Corridor, but it'll be action oriented around that type of thing and connected with that. That's at the East Sanger, East Sangerville Green. It'll be a Friday, uh, I think Friday night and Saturday and going into Sunday. All right. In the West Corridor, there's a huge uh, um, action being taken place. We're going to go, at least a few of us are going to New Hampshire on September 1st to go to... Uh, Hands across New Hampshire. Somebody help me. Hands, Hands across, across New, New Hampshire. Hampshire. Thank the, you. <laughs> go ahead. And the third regional gathering. So, um, so that's happening. And then the Common Ground Fair, we are occupying the Common Ground Fair. So anyone interested in helping me set this dome up, we are... Uh, Rachel is going to be a point person for that. She has a sign-up sheet. We do need people who are interested in helping us at the Common Ground Fair for the weekend to come and, you know, occupy with us. <sighs> is there people walking the pipeline? I was told that that's the yes. first yeah. group. There is, this, hey, Heather? 7th of October through to the 14th. Um, and we're not sure exactly what section yet. But it's going to be a multi purpose walking experience. Do you have do people you, know what the point person is? I'm going to be a point person and also James Appleby. Explain the pipeline. Right. Oh, um, so tar sand. Right now there's a pipeline that goes from South Portland um, to Montreal and it takes crude oil. And it was built. Occupy Austin, Occupy Texas. I have a question about that. Who actually owns the... The Keystone is, um, uh, it is a Trans-Canada project, but it is 70% owned by Exxon. That Exxon. is not, yes, that is not very well known, not very well publicized. They like to keep it low-key, but it, it, it is a transnational uh, company that calls itself uh, Trans-Canada, and they are the... Uh, prime movers behind this uh, Keystone XL pipeline, and uh, they did an end run around us. There were 1,253 of us that got arrested in front of the White House between August 20th and uh, September 3rd last year, um, and we thought we won a, uh, an interim victory at least. Uh, Obama said no to the permit for the pipeline, and it, because it's crossing an international border and it is a new pipeline, they're actually laying pipe, unlike the Portland-Montreal, which is an existing pipeline that they're just doing reversal for, and as well as the Enbridge Line 9. This is new pipe, and they have to get a presidential permit. Well, at this point, they're they're okaying the southern end of it, and then it's going to be a done deal. You know, when it gets far enough, they're it's going to after the election, he thinks he's going to be reelected, and then he's kind of golden. You know, oh yes, by the way, we can't push this off any longer. We're going to have to permit from um, Athabasca, from northern Alberta down across the uh, uh, U.S. Canadian border. Why can't they just cut it off? Cut who? Like <laughs> if. <clears throat> Cut the pipe. We could. Why can't we, we just can. say, we no, this oil's yeah. not going anywhere I, right here. Yeah. Hey, that's the point. That, that is the point. Right. That's what we're talking not about. I, I didn't get back involved until Sam Swenson asked me if I would drive the Earth bus to summer camp. It's up here now. And as soon as he said that, it resonated. Like, nothing had resonated since the end of February. And so I drove that down there, got there, took my 13-year-old, got there right before it poured. It was amazing that there was this triple rainbow. And meanwhile, and it just met all these new people, all this new infusion of people who've been watching Occupy from the sidelines who are now, like, swarming in. And uh, one of the things that we did when we were, we were deciding what to put on this sign... And one of the things that, that we came up with was C change, B change, B change, C change. So it's S E E change, B E change, B E E change, S E A change. So you see it, then you become it, then you cross pollinate it, then you paradigm shift. Fireflies and I are in love, and out of it we will not go. <laughs> Along with the rest, we see change, be change, be change, see change, see change, be change, be change, see change. So the paradigm shifts to joy. We stand in Philadelphia, mic check mountain power, understand deep pain. All of us born into shits, fucked up, 
Shit's fucked up and bullshit. Shit's fucked up. Shit's fucked up and bullshit. Reclaim these streets. <laughs> Knowing that the only rules there are are the ones we are currently breaking. We reclaim these commons. Hold our humanity. Till we feel only compassion for those still bound. Even the batons they slam into the shoulder, the throat of our dear one, hurting themselves more than him. When they send in helicopters, we thank them for the breeze, and dancing, we take all streets. To one, we are the people, two, these are the common three. This occupation is not ending. Learning to be free, we share abundance, turn away from scared shitty, loving most to face our own dissembling. These, the lessons of the encampments. As it drops from our shoulders, this weight of damned respectability of other false gods worshipped on deadly altars of unbroken devotion. Rejoicing in perfection, sweet rabble, we rouse. Obnoxiousness forever. Obnoxiousness forever. Obnoxiousness forever. As long as it's not me. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the camp of burdock okay this is just sweetland. a little bit this is sweetland farm in starks maine um down that way you can't quite see it from here is well you can sort of see our dishwashing station and then down there is our um com community tent it's kind of a big tarp structure, longhouse thing, with the kitchen, and down through that is the fire pit and one of the paths to the river. Um, people camp, this is kind of a family camping area, and then people camp all along in here, and then... And is your tent in here somewhere? Yeah, in there. The little blue and white thing? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I was here for setup, so I got uh, Troy's camping areas. Oh, cool. Um, and then... The, oh, here's uh, one of our composting toilets. Oh, if you have I to should <laughs> let me take a look at <laughs> this. I, the, the I should toilet. know. We're entering. And okay. Here, see anybody in here for a while? Um, our lovely ballot box. Oh, okay. <laughs> make, make, cast your vote. Um, and is that peat moss? It, uh, or nope, sawdust. It's sawdust. Okay. Um, so we try to keep it solids only. It makes it less sloshy when we have to take it to the compost pile. And you've got the um, sanitizer. The sanitizer. Uh, <laughs> The paper. toilet paper on the Last floor. Last duck on a little thing, but it, seems it to have fell. A, I don't know what happened to it. It's right there. Yeah, but there was a hanging thing on this side that I don't know what happened to. Okay. Um, I might re-rig that. There's also some up there. Um, and then when you're done, put sawdust on. Oh, cool. <laughs> and sanitize your hands. There's more camping off in the woods through here, and then there's another field on the other side. There's a little shortcut through a ravine, and another field where there's a deeper swimming hole that's sort of the adult swimming hole um, and more camping all along that field. Oh, cool. Great. Flash <laughs> area, we've got uh, multiple stuff. Uh, rinse, uh, wash, rinse, sanitize, dry, uh, set up. And it works really, really well. Cool. So this is our um, kitchen, no uh, burdock ki outdoor kitchen. Uh, we've yeah, got yeah. different kinds of burners and also a really nice stove griddle sit set up here. Um, counters for serving, all our pots and pans. Here's dishes. This is where people get their dishes and cups um, then grab their food along there. Right now is a kids cooking workshop. Cool. Um, yeah. And then we'll see, make sure that everybody. Wait, do we get two? Yes. Yeah. Amber, you have to say if you eat meat, you only eat meat. 
and this was where the burdock gathering was. 